If you feel like being healthy, wealthy, and wise in 2011, you have stopped on the right channel. Here to answer your questions on all things health, finances, and consumer issues are our early show experts, CBS News medical correspondent Dr. Jennifer Ashton, CBS News business and economics correspondent Rebecca Jarvis, and early show consumer correspondent Susan Copen. You ladies always have the answer, so we're going to get them for some of our viewers who've actually submitted some of their questions for 2011. Jen, I'm going to start with you. Our first question comes from Shelly. It came to us via Facebook. Shelly writes that she would love to start eating healthier, however, the good fat, the bad fat, the good carb, the bad carb, it all gets a little confusing, confusing. overwhelming. Can you break it down and make it more simple? Did Susan Copen submit that under the name <laughs> of Shelly? It is such a common question, Erica, and people ask me this literally every day. I think there are a couple of general tips, and then we'll show some specifics. One of the easiest general tips is to try to make little changes gradually. Mm -hmm. You're much more able to stick with a program when it's not a sweeping, dramatic change. The next thing, and you've heard me say it a lot, try to eat from the farm, not the factory which means you want to try to eat whole foods, foods that as you put them in your mouth resemble their original form, minimize the stuff that comes out of the bag. Now when you look at visually the good versus the bad, we're going to start with the bad, the things that you should try to generally avoid. I call this the Susan Copen tray. You'll notice that these are the <laughs> She's carbs. killing me. This is how Susan likes killing to eat. Me. That's right. These are the, what we call the bad carbs. So they come basically from white grain products. And that's what we hear a lot is just avoid the white things. You want as much exactly. color as you can in your diet. That's correct. And when you talk about carbohydrates, there truly are good carbs carbs and bad carbs. So you can see here a lot of white foods. Generally, if you want an easy thing to remember, try to avoid them. But we need carbohydrates in our diet. You can't completely avoid them. So if you go to the yellow tray, that's the good tray. That's the <laughs> Rebecca Jarvis tray. <laughs> yeah, right. You'll see a lot of whole grain products. So f um, cereals that are very high in fiber, mm -hmm. bread that has a lot of live grains in it. That is only about 12 grams of carbohydrates a slice, that particular bread. The grain quinoa, which is great, Love very quinoa. high in protein. I made protein. it for dinner mm. last night. I've actually convinced my 11-year-old to start to like it, which is incredible. And whole wheat pasta, sweet potatoes, all good carbs okay. in moderation, very easy. Minimally processed, not white. That's what we take away from that. Samantha, right. also writing in on Facebook, wants to know, this is one of your passions, I know. When you're sick, do you stay home or do you just work through the day? Well, again, don't we do it. <laughs> don't I, do it. I'm sorry. I have to call out Susan Copen again. She, I yell at her Poor all Susan. the time. This has changed I, to the beat up no, on Susan's segment. Right? She has, sorry, a, she has a strong work ethic, but the answer is, you guys hear me say it all the time, stay home when you are sick. You are not doing yourself a favor. Mm -hmm. You're not doing your coworkers a favor. Mm -hmm. You likely can be contagious, pass along those germs to other people, and you're not doing your best work when you're sick. Right, but the big concern for a lot of people is, you know what, my boss is going to think that I'm slacking off. So, yes. Rebecca, you know, someone actually wrote into us about that, too. How do you approach this with your boss? Yeah, most important thing to do is to approach them early. So, as soon as you feel like you're coming down with something, let them know. Give a call, even if it's at night, to their voicemail, send an email, and then follow up again the next morning just to say, listen, this is it, I'm sick. Remember also, we have sick day plans in most work environments because people do get sick mm -hmm. so you can take advantage if you're feeling sick and also there's a loss of productivity to an office if someone comes in and gets everyone else sick so remember if you come in and get five other people sick and productivity <laughs> goes down Apparently it happened here <laughs> once. Uh, if that happens, then you don't want to, you know, it's not good for the company. Yeah, okay. normally what I, what I tell people at home, make a sick room, hold yourself up till you're feeling better, load up on fluids, get your blanket, your Robitussin cough syrup, chicken or any soup. cough syrup, chicken, chicken soup. soup, some vitamins, you'll feel better sooner rather than later. Okay, so we're going to move away from the sickness and hopefully away from, from Susan. <laughs> from Susan for just a minute. <laughs> when it comes to debt consolidation, Rebecca, mm -hmm. we have a question from Patricia from Ocean Grove, New Jersey. After you've finished a, a debt consolidation program and paid off all your debt, how does that reflect not so much on your um, credit rating, but overall, um, how does it affect on your finance history? Yeah, so your finance history is really your credit report. Mm -hmm. So every loan you've ever made, every single time you've taken out money from a bank, every time you've spent with your credit card, every time you've missed one of those payments, that shows up on your credit history. It should be there for seven years. And there are loan consolidators and credit counselors who are going to tell you that they can wipe it off your history. That is not the case. It stays in your history for seven years. Okay. And so what you want to do is make sure you're working with a good company. Some of the ways to find the best credit counseling services is to go through United way. Also, the National Foundation for Credit Counseling 
And if you think you're dealing with a bad one, go to the Federal Trade Commission, report it. Okay, we will. Susan, one for you. Okay. Time for you to redeem yourself, my friend. <laughs> I'm kidding. Aurelio from Boston has this question for you. I was just wondering what are some budget-friendly ideas for movie lovers? Oh, I like this one. Okay, <laughs> how about seeing movies for free? The newest movies, I'm not in. old movies, new movies. Legally. Legally, yeah, <laughs> legally. So there's a website called gofobo.com, G-O-F-O-B-O. -O. You can sign up here, become a member, and you can find out about free screenings ah. for new movies. And it's all across the country. No Strings Attached is one of the new movies coming out, Natalie Portman all over the place. We checked Albany, New York City, Minneapolis. There's you name screen, it. You name it. it. I love it. Such a the great only, idea. The only problem is it's first come, first served. So you have to get there early, stand in line with your ticket to get into the theater. But still, it's free. Free. <laughs> great idea. This question uh, also for you from Laura. She sent in via email, one of my favorites. Is there any difference, tell us definitively now, between the store <laughs> brand and the name brand, besides the price, of course? Okay, so you are going to save a lot of money if you go with the store brand, sometimes up to 35%. So if you're looking to slash your bill, go for the store brands. They are so sophisticated now. They are such good products. It's not like buying the generic peas of, of you know, long ago. It's really, really good products. You want to save money? Buy the store brands. All right. Great advice. As always, from our panel of early experts, Rebecca, uh, Susan, and Jen, thank you very much, and, and good luck working on your diet. And remember, when you're sick, stay home, Copen. Yes, I'll do that. <laughs>